Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first video on this channel. I've done this intro about 5,000 times, and I'm pretty much over it. So, we have John Ludwig Hammer, a.k.a. Ham Bam, uh, going up against Magnum Carlsbad, a.k.a. Magnus Carlsen, and it's the 2003 World Youth Chess Championship. Let's go! All right, so Magnum Carlsbad in this game is playing with the black pieces. Ham Bam's playing with the white pieces, and he opens the game with Knight F3. Um, this is called the Ready Opening. It was named after Richard Ready. He lived in the late 1800s to early 1900s, um, and he actually died at the age of 40 from scarlet fever, so sucks to be him. In any event, uh, it's primarily designed to prevent a quick e5 from happening, and so because he can't play e5 from happening, otherwise the knight would simply take it, um, Magnus instead plays d6. D6 is fairly straightforward. It's trying to get E5 to happen on the board anyway, which of course Ham Bam does not want to have happen, which is why he plays D4 himself, um, so that way E5 cannot happen. Magnum Carlsbad is now going to switch gears a little bit. He wants to develop his pieces, but he doesn't want to uh, play Knight to C6 because if he plays that, then the pawn can come forward. Bat his Knight around a little bit. It's no fun. So instead, he plays uh, Knight to F6, which is designed primarily to prevent a quick e4 from happening from white, and attacking the center prevents the uh, prevents white from actually obtaining full central control. Now the next move is going to look kind of weird, but it makes sense once you think about it for a second. Uh, so he white clearly wants to play uh, e4, and so you have two options really to play e4. You can either put your knight in front of your c pawn or you can put it over here on d2, which is what Ham Bam does. He plays knight b to d2. Now, the idea behind this is that you want to potentially play e, uh, c4 in the future. Your d pawn and your c pawn really like to go together. Um, but the downside of that is, is that this poor little bishop is not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. Um, you're going to either need to move this knight out of the way or potentially fianchetto the bishop, putting it on the long diagonal uh, before you can really do anything with it. Now, uh, because of this fact, um, and that nothing's really going to be happening anytime soon, Magnum Carlsbad plays g6. Now, the idea behind g6 is that you want to fianchetto your bishop. You don't want, you're not going to really be putting it on this diagonal, any, whoa, not that diagonal, this diagonal, um, at all anytime soon, unless you want to explode open the board. Um, and so instead, it's better to put it on the long diagonal, fianchettoing the bishop yourself, attacking this pawn in the center of the board, and also making it harder for uh, your opponent to fianchetto the bishop, because if you were to do that, then the once this uh, knight moves out of the way, then the bishops would see each other um, if you were if Ham Bam was to fianchetto his bishop. In any event, none of that happens, and because he has the opportunity to uh, get full central control, Ham Bam decides to do that. Um, now, just continuing on with the ideas, we're wanting to fianchetto our bishop, so Magnum Carlsbad fianchettoes his bishop. Um, now we're trying to prevent anything from happening and opening up any attacks here, uh, this bishop opening up an attack, and so we're going to overdevelop, uh, we're going to overprotect, rather, um, this pawn on e4, and it's also going to allow for potentially rotation of this knight away. So, playing bishop to... Uh, Bishop to d3 is fairly logical. And now both sides castle. Castles, castles. Just getting the kings out of the way makes sense. Um, and so now uh, now the question is, what is uh, Magnum Carlsbad going to do? Well, we're going to finish our development. We're going to play knight to c6. Fairly standard, really just trying to add some additional pressure onto this pawn. And as soon as this uh, knight moves out of the way, this bishop's going to come alive and attack the pawn on uh, d4. So c3 happens c3 makes a lot of sense you're trying to really bolster this uh, pawn in the center saying that no matter what you do with this knight whether you move it here or try to capture at some point move it out of the way out of the way back to d7 um, this pawn is going to be protected that's pretty much the idea now magnum carlsbad decides okay i've had enough of this i'm going to actually explode the center now you have a couple of options either you can attack you can capture this pawn, you can push the pawn forward, uh, you, there's a lot of options, or you could just do nothing. Ham Bam decides to do, he does nothing. He plays h3, which does add a little bit of breathing room to his king, uh, so he doesn't really get stuck on the back rank at any point, which is always a fairly good idea. 
Now we see that rotation idea that we were talking about earlier begin to take form. And Magnum Carlsbad rotates his knight out to the edge of the board, rotating the uh, to h5. Um, again, this is now opening up the bishop, putting a lot of pressure on this uh, central pawn on d4. So, because of all this pressure building up, Hambam finally captures. But now, an in-between move, an interesting in-between move, noticing that there's nothing guarding this bishop, decides to play knight to f4. Very interesting move. Attacks this bishop, basically says he can't really do anything uh, uh, except move that bishop out of the way. So, this is where one of the really fascinating moves ends up happening. You're not really pinning this knight, so it's not it's kind of a useless move. Plus, it's going to be able to capture this back, um, and so that's exactly what Magnus does. He takes on e5, um, leaving this bishop over here completely stranded. The knight um, knights now see each other, and so um, knight takes on e5 happens, and a really great move, not capturing back immediately, not capturing with the pawn but instead threatens a checkmate. Threatens a checkmate by playing queen to g5. Queen g5 both attacks this uh, knight. It attacks the bishop all the way on the far end, and it threatens a mate. So a real dynamic position that you see going on here. Uh, and a fascinating move. Um, and so ham bam See clearly because he's not a complete insano person sees that his uh, that he is about to be mated so he instead blocks with the uh, knight giving up his uh, bishop which Magnum Carlsbad promptly takes and now you have a very fascinating position where you have this very strong uh, white light colored complex this bishop sucks just it just does and so because of that uh, you're trying to get that out of the way with playing uh, uh, knight to b3 but uh, this opens an attack on the on the knight which you can see from this bishop um, and so you're going to have to move that plays knight to e to check as you can see it's clearly a check um, and king to h1 king h1 is played moving out of the check so after moving the king out of the way uh, this bishop has not moved at all, and you have an opportunity to open up the king and get rid of your bad bishop. You might as well do it. Um, so, uh, the bishop is staring at this uh, piece. Might as well take it. Captures, captures. Now, Magnus, from this position, sees something that, quite frankly, is fairly obvious in hindsight. But when you're playing the game, unless you know about this uh, pattern... Maybe you're not going to see it. This king uh, is being cut off by this knight. So if you can get one of these two rooks over onto this file, then it's going to be checkmate. So how are you going to do that? Well, the first thing you should probably do is centralize your rook. Fairly standard. Centralizing your rook. Looking to lift it up and move it over. Now... I don't think, I don't actually know because I haven't talked to Ham Bam at all, but I'm assuming that Ham Bam didn't really see this this far ahead. And so he plays bishop to, uh, and you can see what happens to the evaluation bar, it goes to minus five. Um, because he just, I think, was just trying to develop some pieces and attack a pawn. Terrible idea, though, because now Magnum Carlsbad takes full advantage of this and plays Rook takes e4. Now you've got a problem. Because this is going to be taken, or this queen can come over here. And it's pretty much all over. You have pretty much only one shot to get out of this, and that's with uh, the move like g3, just to give yourself some breathing space and hide your king. Uh, but it is all bad. So I guess not realizing just how much danger he's in, uh, Ham Bam decides to play rook to e1. I suppose he's trying to threaten this knight that's been placed here, but unfortunately it's too little too late. And uh, Magnum Carlsbad finishes with one hell of a haymaker. 
um, and basically decides to turn into Michael Strahan and sacks his queen. Sacks his queen for mate. Because if you were to play pawn captures queen, then the... Here, I'll just play it out. If you capture this pawn, it's rook h4 mate with the knight covering these squares, uh, these escape squares, and the rook delivering the mate. An unbelievable queen sacrifice uh, to finish that game off. That didn't actually happen. Uh, in, it was actually in that position where he sacked the queen that finally uh, Ham Bam realized, oh no, I'm in trouble. And that was pretty much the conclusion of this game. But I thought it was incredible um, that he was able to destroy Hammer in such a uh, in such a fashion in the Youth Chess Championship. And something interesting to note is that when he played this game, he was, I believe, 12 or 13. Um, so Magnus Carlsen is a beast. He has been a beast. He continues to be a beast. Um, and of course, he had a little bit of help from Ham Bam not figuring it out. But I wanted to show that all to you because it was incredible. And I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please subscribe. Um, it's This is a baby channel. We're just starting it out. But I'm going to try and show you a lot more fascinating games that were played both by Magnus and others throughout history. Um, and I think you're going to enjoy a lot of it. So in any event, thank you very much. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. Hit the like button. Hit so many things that you're becoming a domestic abuser. Any event, thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.